Hi students. In this video, we're going to dis uh, continue our discussion on naming compounds. But before we continue, I want to talk about the polyatomic ions that I introduced in the last video. We have to get these polyatomic ions. Unfortunately, I try to avoid memorization. There is a little bit of memorization in chemistry. And one of the things you're going to have to kind of be fluent in, it's like memorizing your times tables, is your polyatomic ions. So. That's what this video is for. I'm gonna to try to provide some useful tricks to help you get through that, but there always will be a little bit of memorization. So to review, polyatomic ion, poly, more than one atom. Ion, it's charged. How does this group of atoms that have a charge stay together? They're bonded covalently. So a polyatomic ion is a group of atoms held covalently that carry a charge. So these are some of the common ones. Now, if you're looking at this and going, ay, 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 this is a lot to memorize. This actually isn't all of them. <laughs> this is just some. These are common ones. And a lot of people already know quite a few of these. I'll give you an example. A lot of people already know hydroxide. And you kind of need to know the hydroxide ion. You can think of it as an oxide, an oxygen right, an O2 minus plus a hydrogen, a plus one, and two, negative two plus one would give me, if I combine those two, a negative one. So that's your hydroxide ion. It's a hydrogen attached to an oxide. Another one that a lot of people are familiar with is ammonium. So you have ammonia, was it, which is NH3, ammonium, it has a little more than just ammonia, right? So here's ammonia. And ammonium has that E-um, like lithium, sodium, potassium, like the group one. Well, ammonium has an extra H plus attached to it. And we'll talk about this with Lewis dot structures down the line, but there's a lone pair on the nitrogen and essentially, I should be drawing if I do electron pushing. A bond is formed between these two. But you can think of ammonium as an extra proton attached to ammonia, and it has a plus one charge like the eums. Okay. And then peroxide is kind of a common one. You know, we saw that in one of the earlier videos hydrogen peroxide, that per prefix means one more oxygen. That's why H2O, right? It would just be hydrogen oxide. You could say dihydrogen oxide. This would be dihydrogen peroxide, right? Or just hydrogen peroxide. Another really common one people hear of is cyanide, right? You took a cyanide pill, hydrocyanic acid, right? So cyanide. And another one that's really common is the acetate right, found in, it's basically after the acidic acid donates its proton and it leaves behind the acetate ion. So these are, you know, a few that some people are familiar with. I don't have tricks for these. Those you just kind of have to memorize. I do have tricks for some of the other ones. Now, the first thing is we got to talk about what an oxyanion is. It's basically just and polyatomic ion with oxygens attached. So there are two families of the oxyanions. They either have two or four member families. So in one example, I have nitrite and nitrate. In another example, I have hypochlorite, <laughs> chlorite, chlorate, and perchlorate. So already now you might be getting nervous. I haven't explained this yet, okay? I'm gonna break this down, but I just wanna introduce, sometimes the oxyanions come in families where there's two and four members in that family. It typically has a non-metal and then it has oxygens. That's why they're oxyanions. So now how are we gonna remember all these? Well, if you're gonna memorize them, Okay, if you're one of those people who love three by five cards, then I would put these 
on a three by five card. Okay, these are the five big non-metal eights. And when I say non-metal eights, right? Whoops, when I say non-metal eights, uh, I can kind of show that, but you think of the non-metal on the right side of the periodic table. So basically with the five big non-metal eights is you have the non-metal, that's where the name is derived from. Whoops, sorry about that. You have the non-metal, that's where the name's derived from. And you can think of it, if it's a non-metal eight, it has three or four oxygens, okay? So phosphate, well, that's phosphorus, which is a non-metal, right? And then there's three or four oxygens. So for now, we'll just put a zero, a, a no right there. Sulfate, sulfur and oxygen. We'll worry about the three and the four later. Chlorine and oxygen, right? And here I have carbonate, carbon and oxygen, and nitrate, oh no, NO, nitrogen and oxygen. So how do I know if there's three or four? Well, the periodic table, which I told you is the world's best cheat sheet, helps me. So get a periodic table right now. Go to that periodic table, get a pen. And what I want you to do is write a four. Go down phosphorus to arsenic, cross over to selenium, and then from sulfur, go down from selenium to tellurium. And what do you see there? You see a four. If you use that four, what you realize is if the non-metal's not on that four, it's got three oxygen. <laughs> That's the trick. So I don't necessarily want you to know borate and silicate. I mean, iodate's pretty popular, so is, arson, so is bromate. But for the most part, you have to know these basic five to start with. So the five big non-metal eights, non-metal with three or four oxygen. How do you know? Well, if the non-metal is on the four on that periodic table, you have four oxygen. So phosphate, guess what it has? Four oxygen. Why? It's on that freaking four. Sulfate, four. Chlorate, well, it's not on the four, so it's got three. Carbonate, three. Nitrate, three. That's pretty much it. Now for the charges, it's a little trickier. You know, for the most part, you can look at kind of the eyed endings, right? When you think of eyed, the monoatomic, right? When you have the monoatomic ions, those are eyes. These are polyatomic ions. And these polyatomic ions are the five big non-metal eight. So they're poly. But they follow a similar pattern to the ides. Group seven, the halogens, one away from the noble gases, the eight ions are like them. They have a negative one. Group 6A, like oxygen, negative two. Over here, 5A, negative three, like nitride and phosphide. So nitrate and phosphate. Actually, nitrate is an exception. Nitrate does not have that. I apologize. But then it kind of repeats. Negative two, negative three. So you can see you start with a one, two, three. And then over here, one, two, three, but then it repeats with the two. One, two, three. So for the most part, the charges are a little trickier, but that four is awesome. And it's a lot better than just randomly memorizing everything, right? There's another trick. And you can use this as well. I prefer the four. But there's nickel the camel, eight, clam supper in Phoenix. That's really goofy to think of a camel eating clams in Phoenix. I mean, whatever. But it works, okay? So the first letter, which I have in red, is the nonmetal. So nick, the nonmetal is nitrogen. Camel, the nonmetal is carbon. Clam, chlorine. Supper sulfate, P, phosphorus. Then the number of consonants 
tells me the number of oxygens. So the number of consonants in NIC, the red and black, right? N, C, K, there's three, so there's three oxygen. Camel, one, two, three, three oxygen. Clam, one, two, three consonants, three oxygen. Supper, there's more, there's one, two, three, four, four. Phoenix, one, two, three, four, four. And then the charge is based on the number of vowels in orange. So Nick, one vowel I, it's a negative one charge. And that's how we get nitrate. Camel has two vowels. That's why it's CO3, two minus. Clam, one vowel. So chlorate is a minus one. Supper, two vowels. So sulfate is a two minus. Phoenix, three vowels. So phosphate is a three minus. So you have options, right? So what are your options? I love the four. I'm totally biased with the four. But you got Nick the camel ate a clam supper in Phoenix, or you can memorize. Now, the reason why I like the four, it's easy for me to just draw four on a periodic table if my teacher gives me one on a test. Right, so typically, if I'm in a face-to-face -face setting, I give my students a periodic table to refer to on the test. They can grab it and draw that four right there. Saves them tons of time. And if you look at the four, the reason why I prefer it, right, it, on this table, it shows here's nitrate, right? Why does it have three oxygen? It's not on the four, right? Now, it doesn't work with the chromate and dichromate because they're chromium's a metal. So it's not a non-metal eight. So I want you to know the five big non-metal eights. But you look at phosphate, it's on the four, right? Your carbonate. So it has all these. Your chlorate, check that out. Freaking awesome. Sulfate. But here's what I like about the four even more than Nick the Camel ate a clam supper in Phoenix. What you don't see on this table in your book, but some books have it and some instructors are gonna expect you to know is bromate. It's not on that table. So if you're into making flashcards, this is on your book, you might forget to put it on a flashcard. No problem. Bromate, bromine's a non-metal. It's not on the four. So I have bromine and I have three or four oxygen. It's not on the four, I have three. So where do I get the charge? Well, it's in group 7A, one away from the noble gases. And then it takes care of things like, you know, iodate, tellurate, right? So if someone said, hey, what's tellurate? Right? So you would look around, try to find tellurium, and you'd see, oh, oh, it's on the four. So what does that mean? Tellurium is the, right, non-metal, and then I'm going to use the Oh, there's three or four, boom, there's four, and it's following the charge of negative two. So I, I like the four better than, you know, the, the little saying with Nick, because there are other, you know, oxyanions that it helps me derive. But if there are only five, you're going to know. If you're only going to know five, you need to know the five big eights. And the Nick, the Campbell, it a clam, Supper in Phoenix will cover those five big non-metal eights. Now remember, I said some of these oxyanions, they have, you know, two members. Well, nitrate. We just went over nitrate. It's nitrogen, three or four oxygen. Why is it three? It's not on the four. It's negative one. Well, what's the difference between nitrite? It has one less oxygen. That's the key difference. So the ites have one less oxygen than the eights. So if you know your five big non-metal eights, guess what you also know? You know your ites. Oops, let me go back. I'll show you what I mean, All right? If you know what sulfate is, you should know what sulfite would be. Okay, sulfate. Sulfur, is it on the four? Yes, it is. 
It's got a two negative charge. So sulfite, what would be one less than four oxygen? That would be my sulfite. Now, a lot of people don't like that because they're like, well, nitrite only has two. Yeah, that's because nitrate only had three. So you have to look at the eight as the starting point, right? So phosphate, what if you had phosphate and they asked you to figure out phosphite, right? Well, phosphate, P-O, it's on the four, four. It's got a three minus charge. So what's phosphite? P-O, one less, because it's an I, but it has the same charge. So again, right away, you're not gonna memorize all of these. I don't expect you to, but get the five big non-metal eights and then everything else is easier. Why? Because one less from the eight is the I. And this is only the two member family. You do see cases where you have four members. But again, everything's derived from the eight. Chlorate. How do I know that it has three oxygen? It's not on that four. Or you could remember clam, right? The C, the L, the M, that gives you three oxygen and the one vowel A gives you the negative charge. You can do that, that's totally fine. But with a four member, they don't just have the I, which we said was one less oxygen. They also have the per chlorate. Per means one more. Remember, what was this name? That was hydrogen peroxide. Why? It has one more oxygen. So the per prefix means one more. So if I have a perchlorate, instead of having the three, which I derived from the four on the periodic table, instead of having three oxygen like chlorate does, perchlorate has one more, it has four. The ite is gonna have one less, so it has two. Hypo, like a hypodermic needle, right? Means less, or hypoglycemic, right? So hypo means two less oxygen. So hypo means under, right? So two less gives me only one. I, and I, if I kept removing oxygens, I'd be left with just the chloride ion. And that's not a polyatomic, that's a monoatomic, okay? Well, again, we're focusing on polyatomics. But the reason why I think the four is better than anything, because now if I say, all right, well, what's bromate? right? That's not part of nickel, the camel, ate a clam supper in Phoenix, right? You didn't throw it on a three by five card because it wasn't on the table, but it doesn't matter. Why it doesn't matter? You look at the four. Bromine's not on the four. So it's got three. It's got a negative one charge, just like chlorate. Why? Group seven. So guess what per bromate would be? Right? Per means one more. So bromate is BrO3, per bromate, it's BrO4. And then I, I'm sure you get the rest, bromite. Ite means one less than this three, so I'm gonna be BrO2 minus. Hypo bromite. I apologize, I'm not the neatest person. What's up, bro? There's your hypobromite. So let's see if we can apply this now that we've learned the polyatomic ions to some, right, of these ionic compounds. So when I look at this, everyone knows what that is. That's sodium. Oh, yeah, yeah. Right, so that's not carbon oxide. A lot of people do that. That is not carbon oxide. It is an eight, uh, it's one of the oxyan anions, right? The polyatomic oxyanions. So you gotta look, is carbon on the three or the four on the periodic table? Or I'm sorry, is carbon on the four? It is not. So three means it's carbonate. So that's sodium carbonate. Again, why? Because on the periodic table, carbon is not on that four. So over here, so it has three as an eight ion. 
Why is it two sodium? Because carbonate has a two negative and sodium has a plus one. So I do what? Chris cross. How did I know that this was ionic? Because they're charged species, right? Sodium, the metal, is a cation. It has a positive charge. Carbonate is an anion. It's polyatomic, but it's still an anion negatively charged. So next, magnesium hydroxide, MgOH2. Well, why? Hydroxide has a negative one charge. That's the one I first talked about. And magnesium, it's a group 2A forms a 2 plus. What do I do? Crisscross. And notice I have to show that there's two hydroxides, right? Because there's two hydroxides to cancel out the one 2 plus charge of magnesium. So I put parentheses around the entire species of hydroxide. I don't do this. If I do that, I'm just saying there's two hydro. That's like Mg water. <laughs> no, it's magnesium hydroxide. So you want to put it in parentheses. So potassium nitrate, KNO3. Why? Nitrate, minus one. And I can erase some things here. All right, we erased all this. Got my nitrate. It's not on the four, so it has three. It's got a negative. Potassium's group one, crisscross. They're a one-to-one -one ratio. Ooh, this next one's tricky. Why is it tricky? It's ionic. It's got a metal, but the metal is not one of the representative elements. It's not in group 1A, 2A, 3A, 4A, 5A, 6A, 7A. It's a transition metal. So right off the bat, you have to know that transition metals can form more than one charge. So nobody expects you to memorize these charges, right? So you do need to know that CO is cobalt, but what is it? Cobalt what phosphate? So I have to figure this out by going, all right, well, phosphate, it's not on the four phosphorus, or it's on the four, so it has four oxygen, it's got a three minus, and then there's only one cobalt. So what charge is gonna cancel out that three minus? A three plus if it's a one-to-one -one ratio, so it's cobalt three phosphate. Now, if they give me the name, that's, that's awesome when they give me the name right nickel two so that means nickel with a two plus and then sulfate sulfur <coughs> excuse me it's on the four it's got a two minus charge it's a one-to-one -one ratio nickel two sulfate i think it's harder to remember that you got to do the roman numeral when you're writing the name so going from a formula to a name is a little tricky because you might forget that roman numeral don't do it and then lastly, this is sodium, but what is that? Is that perchlorate, chlorate, chlorite, hypochlorite, chloride? Well, we know it's not chloride because it's not a monoatomic. It's an oxyanion. And I can use the nonmetal eight to help me derive it. So chlorine, right? It's not on the frickin' four, so there's three. But that's chlorate. Right, because that's how I derive the non-metal, the five big non-metal eight ions. I use the four. Chlorine's not on the four, so chlorate has three. But this doesn't have three. So it's not sodium chlorate. What was one less than eight? Because there's only two instead of three. Sodium chlorite. The ite is one less. So you got to practice. This stuff's tricky, but I hope this video helps. And if you guys have questions or anything, you can email me or leave a comment. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for watching.